So, second insight, if you have a fatal flaw, fix it. Now, only about 30% of the managers we've ever assessed have fatal flaws. Most people's data looks sort of like this. Nothing really low, nothing really high, kind of all average. When typically we give that to leaders, their concentration on this is usually on the lower rated items. In fact, I was with a group a few weeks ago and I said, how many here have had feedback before? Everybody had. How many here, last time you got feedback, took action on one of the most negative items? Everybody raised their hand. Why did you do that? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that why you assessed us? You measure us on these characteristics, we work on the lowest rated item. That's how we improve. In fact, you know, performance improvement for most people means fixing weaknesses. That's how we tend to improve. I remember my first performance review. My boss called me into his office and he said, we're going to have a performance discussion. I said, that's wonderful. And then he started saying all these nice things to me, these wonderful things. And I thought, good, yes, come on, keep going. And then I heard that word, but <laughs> what was next? Right, the negative stuff. When I left the office, what was I going to work on? I was going to work on my weaknesses. I think my experience is fairly similar to yours. Most of the way we think about improving performance of our people that work with us is by focusing on and concentrating on what they're not good at. I was with a group of bankers uh, a couple of years ago. I asked them to write down the one thing that if they did it really well would make a huge difference in their ability to be successful. They were quick to write it down. And then I asked them, in the last 90 days, you've all had a performance discussion with your boss, a performance evaluation. How many of you in that evaluation talked about the one thing that would make you more effective? 65 people in the room, five hands went up. What did the other 60 talk about? They talked about this. The problem with focusing only on weaknesses is oftentimes it's not the critical variable that's going to make us effective. So let's stop doing that so often. Sometimes it's helpful when you have a fatal flaw, but when you don't have a fatal flaw, we think it's more important to focus on our strengths. Let me give you the evidence for why. We did a study with 2,000 leaders and we assessed them on 16 competencies. We asked the question if they didn't have any strength and a strength was defined as a competency at the 90th percentile, so a characteristic that was very, very good. If they had no strengths, their average effectiveness rating was the 34th percentile. What happened if they had one strength? They did one thing well. Well, you'd expect it to go up, the average to go up. How much? Well, 16 competencies, 1 16th, four or five percentile points, right? Well, when we looked at the data, there was an actually an increase of 30 percentile points with one strength. Isn't that amazing? If you did one thing well, you went from the 34th percentile to the 64th percentile. Why? What happens when people do something very, very well? What do you assume? They're good at other things? Yeah, that's what I assume. And so you get this halo effect. You also get this effect from having other competencies to help you. But what was fascinating in the data is people with three strengths, their average effectiveness rating was the 81st percentile. Now, think of two different ways you have of moving yourself as a leader to the 81st percentile. Option A, you measure yourself on these competencies, your 16 things, and then you always work on the lowest thing, the thing you like the least the thing you're least excited about, right? And you push it up. And then you measure yourself again, find the lowest thing, push it up. Measure yourself again, find the lowest. So over time, you push up 16 behaviors to the 81st percentile. That's option A. That's one way to get to the 81st percentile. Option B, you find three things and you push them to the 90th. Now, if you're only going to focus on three competencies, three characteristics, three skills. 
what would you choose to work on? Stuff you love or stuff you hate? Stuff you love. When you think about how we go about development, which option do we use? Most of us intuitively use A. We always work on that thing that's not so good. We push it up, thing that's not so good. But you know what? When we measured people that worked on their strengths, what we found is, is that they improved twice as much as people that focused on their weaknesses. Why? Because they like it. <laughs> Isn't this incredible? You can be a better leader by doing something you do well a lot better. It wasn't the absence of weakness that created great leaders. What was it? Presence of strength. Well, that was another insight for us that the key to improvement is developing strengths. Let me share one other insight with you. Uh, this is a picture of Kessler. Kessler's our dog. Now, we've had Kessler for several years. After we had him for about a year and a half, I, I thought about Kessler and all his strengths and weaknesses. I had a big list of weaknesses. Kessler doesn't mind real well. He tears up my backyard. He digs holes. And he uh, tends to, he, you, you can play fetch with him, only he just goes and gets the thing you throw, and then he plays keep away from you. He doesn't really bring it back. If he gets out, he plays a fun game called Catch Me If You Can. And it's about an hour's worth of time trying to chase him down to get him back in the pen. You cannot let him off his leash. If you take him for a walk, he drags you. This dog didn't seem to be very effective to me. I didn't see the value of this dog. But a trainer he had put him in the team with six other dogs. And this is a picture of Kessler. Kessler's right here. You notice he's looking at a squirrel over here. But <laughs> these two dogs right here are well-trained lead dogs. Now, Kessler, when he's in a team with six other dogs, he's brilliant. He can pull a group of people 20 miles, and he loves it. You ever been on a great team on a, with a group of people that raised your level of performance? Do you know what that's like? There's a tremendous value from finding a group of people that are going to raise your level of performance. That's what Kessler taught me here, that when he's on a dog sled with five other dogs that know what they're doing, he's brilliant and he acts like a champion, and he knows what he's doing. Teams that make us effective, groups that make us effective, groups that raise our level of performance, they're going to have a tremendous influence on us. So my advice to you is be part of a great team that can lift your performance. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed being here. <laughs>